so I, I can I can go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I was waiting. Um, so it is 6 30. I'm sorry, my computer is not correct. It is 6 32 on Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. And I'm calling the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee to order. Um, so what we tip I have to read the thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. Uh, see instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so just to review the agenda, we will have announcements and introductions for our new members, um, public comment, member reports, action and discussion items, including CRESS and DEI updates, the Resident Oversight Board consultant progress, uh, update on the police chief search, and um, a discussion about police in schools, followed by additional public comment at the end, and then agenda setting and meeting schedule for the next, for upcoming meetings. Um, and if there's anything that we did not reasonably anticipate within 48 hours, we can talk about it after the agenda items and then adjourn. Um, so let's see, why don't we do introductions first? Um, if we could just all go around and introduce ourselves with our name and kind of maybe a brief sentence about why we wanted to join the committee. Um, and then and then we can turn it over to announcements. Um, so I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Allegra Clark. I am the chair of the committee as of right now. Um, and I first got involved with the conversations around community safety in Amherst in 2020 after George Floyd's murder. And I was really interested in seeing alternatives to policing to keep our community safe, especially with some of the racial profiling that does go on in town. Um, I thought that it would be best to learn from strong Black leaders in our community who did put forward a very excellent plan in the community safety working group. And after the opportunity to continue that work was presented, I, I wanted to join with them. So that's why I'm here. Um, and I will pass it to Deborah, um, as she is a member of the original group. Hey, look at this. I'm so excited. Look at all these uh, beautiful faces. Come on, y'all. You can be a little bit more active, a little bit more excited and stuff. I'm excited to see y'all because now I heard something when I got on that we might have a quorum. I mean, those that's like, you know, music to my ears right now. <laughs> so I'm very excited to see you all here. Um, so as Allegra said, uh, my name is Deborah Ferreira. So um, I was actually part, original part of the Community Safety Working Group. Um, and then this is my second year serving on CSSJC. Um, so, you know, a lot in terms of my background, I've been with uh, Amherst for 21 years. And then before that, four years when I came um, to, to school here at UMass, um, I work at the university. I'm an attorney there for the university. Um, and then before just doing in-house for the university, I basically ran um, Title IX, Equal Opportunity, Diversity for the university for 17 years. Um, so obviously, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, social justice is very dear to my heart. Um, and, you know, one of the main reasons why I joined. Uh, but another main reason is because I have uh, two kids, one 19-year-old and one 14-year-old, uh, uh, Black males. Um, and of course, you know, my whole life has been about making sure that people people can be who they are. I'm an immigrant to this country. I'm Cape Verdean from West Africa. And so obviously, um, growing up as uh, uh, an African, 
um, in, in this country, it always came with a lot of challenges, right? A lot of the isms, xenophobia, and so on and so forth. And so that's why I've dedicated my life to making sure that people can be who they are without fear and intimidation um, and without fear of being harassed or discriminated against and being targeted. Um, but then fast forward to, to George Floyd, I got more involved in uh, town politics, as Allegra said, after George Floyd was murdered, um, especially given the fact that I have two black males, right? And I was very, very afraid uh, for their lives um, and for interacting with the police. And so for me, um, although I was part of the protests and everything else, I said I wanted to do something that was a, a lot more meaningful and impactful. And so that's why I joined CSWG and then CSSJC. And even though I have obviously a lot on my plate and a lot that I have to do in my life, I think that this is critically important. So um, yeah, excited to have you all here and just be ready because we, we're gonna be doing a lot of work, a lot of work because there's so much more to be done. Thank you, Deb. Um, Freke? Hi. Um... My name is Freke Ite, and um, I think the question is, speak about why I joined the committee. Okay. Um, I would send me new transplants to Amherst. I've been here about three or so years. And over that time, I've gotten really attached to the town. And so I wanted to be part of... Um, just working with the town in any capacity that I could um, offer my services um, to do so. I think one of the reasons, besides the fact that I like the town, one of the reasons I joined the committee is to serve as an example to others, especially my students. Um, I was teaching political science at Amherst College, and I would always in class speak about local government and public service. And so when I got sworn for the CSSJC, I actually had one of my students um, accompany me to the swearing in. So I think besides public service, it's also to serve as an example for others to be a part of local government. Thank you, good to see everyone. Okay. Um, I'll ask Everald to go next just because he is he rounds out our quorum for tonight, and then um, thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Everald Henry. I am a local attorney in Amherst. I I do criminal defense, I do immigration, and I do contract law. Um, for criminal defense, I spend a lot of time in court representing people who cannot afford attorneys. Um, social justice matters to me very much. Um, representation matters to me. And so when I had the chance to be part of this committee, I thought um, it would further um, my helping people. Um, <clears throat> so I, I do like the idea of what we're trying to do in this committee because there are many times when I'm in court and I have a client in front of me and I read a police report and I'm thinking, why is this person here? And when there could be alternatives to, as, to them being charged and having a person charged has a lot of unintended consequences that police don't think about and in their defense, they're not supposed to. Um, but at the same time, there are situations where things can be de-escalated and I don't think that ever factors in. So I wanna be part of the solution and I think being part of this committee um, affords me to do so. I do also work with, um, a lot of homeless clients. Um, so I, I, again, I I work with health equity, um, which quite frankly, when you think about it, um, health equity law, it all ties together. So I work a lot with homeless populations, um, try my best to do what I can to um, <clears throat> get them resources in the community. So I think being part of this community is gonna afford me the opportunity to be of more help. Um, I have an immigrant family. My family is Jamaican. Um, I, I was I grew up and raised in Maryland. Um, that's home to me. Um, so I went to college in Pennsylvania. I've had mixed experiences in Pennsylvania, but when I moved to Massachusetts um, in 2008, 
I I always tell my friends that um, <clears throat> I won't live in a red state or a purple state. <laughs> um, I like knowing where, where my politics is going to go. And I say that because um, I like knowing that um, the people that I vote for are committed to doing um, what I want as a voter. And I think one of the biggest things that Massachusetts did recently is a criminal justice reform. Um, I was very um, proud of what we did during COVID when COVID started. There's a, um, there a lot of people that were incarcerated that could have been released and the governor um, afforded the opportunity for them to be released. So um, being in Massachusetts um, gives me a chance to say, you know, what I do matters. And I think it does because we have people like this committee um, who fight for people who don't have voices. And I think most importantly um, is representation. And I wanna be a voice for people who do not have voices. And I think being part of this committee gives me a chance to continue to do that. So I'm happy to be here. I'm committed, I'm a hard worker. Um, and so I am all in. Well, we're happy to have you. Um... Isabella? Hi, everyone. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I'm Isabella Malmquist. Sorry if you can hear my fan in the background. I realize that can be annoying. Um, I'm a junior at Amherst College uh, from Tampa, Florida. I'm studying political science and French. And uh, I really wanted to join this committee because not only do I have a personal commitment to social justice coming from a multicultural background, um, I'm Cuban and um, I also did an internship this summer in Sweden for Amnesty International, doing a lot of grassroots grassroots human rights stuff. Um, and one of the things I was doing is trying to uh, raise awareness about petitions, about uh, various human rights violations across uh, around the world. And a lot of them are actually taking place in the US, even in places that we consider um, really not having those kinds of human rights violations. So I think after my experience in Sweden this summer, uh, I was really interested in in uh, exploring uh, and really resolving human rights violations and social justice issues here at home. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and, and welcome. And last but not least, Lisette. Hi, um, good evening everyone. And thank you for, um, like Alyssa said, having a very warm welcoming. Um, so my name is Lizette Paredes. Um, I am currently a sessions clerk for Springfield um, for the mess for the trial court. Um, I've been a resident of Amherst for the last 23 years. I pretty much grew up here in Amherst. Um, and I really wanted to be a part of a group of individuals that are willing to listen and come up with ideas. And, um, you know, I really wanted to be heard and um, come up with different strat strategies and um, ways to connect with the public. Uh, I too am a immigrant. I'm from Central America, um, specifically from El Salvador. And um, I really enjoy that our, you know, living, personally, I live in South Amherst um, and we have such a diverse group of individuals here mm -hmm. um, in South Amherst and just Amherst in, in total. But I look forward to putting my experience and, um, you know, gathering any idea, uh, ideas and experiences that looks like this is a very well-rounded group of individuals with a um, lot of cultural backgrounds. So I look forward to it. Thank you and welcome. Um, so I think that that was a nice welcoming and a hello. Um, and we do have a piece of sadder news, which is a goodbye. So I'll turn it over to Deborah. Yeah, um, wanted to just take some time to um, acknowledge uh, one of the members from um, CSSJC, uh, Demetria Shabazz, who unfortunately uh, passed away. Um, I believe it was yesterday. Um, and it, she joined CSSJC, you know, last year. She was one of the co-chairs uh, with Allegra. Um, fierce, fierce warrior for justice um, who um, jumped right in and, and did so much work with us and really helped us to really establish CSSJC. 
uh, in terms of our parameter, our mission, and, and really staying focused in terms of what we needed to do. Um, I, I'm sure some of you know that right when we started, there was this incident July 5th where um, young people um, had this really horrific interaction with the police uh, where they were told they had no rights. And um, Demetria D was one of the people that obviously, you know, kept us on course and was uh, part of the, the different town council meetings that we had to go to to make sure that we were being heard. Um, and then even before that, um, Dee actually had a, a company uh, called Seventh Generation. Uh, I, th I think the Seventh Generation, there was another part to it. But Movement I Collective, I believe. Yeah, Movement Co Collective, I believe, yes. And but we always called it, you know, um, familiarly as um, Seventh Gen. And they were an integral, integral part of the community safety working group, um, uh, basically being able to gather the information that really supported and the data that supported our recommendations that we made. That that's why our group is in existence, right? Because I'm, you know, one of the original members, and so we relied on Dee and her staff and, and the people that she had on board, all the people that she brought on, who were all fabulous and marvelous to gather the data. And why I love the work they did was that they went in and really had people from all backgrounds, age, um, um, uh, class, um, you know, um, orientation, everything, right? Language to go in and really go into the community to, to, to talk to people that we usually and normally would not listen to, the people that we actually had to listen to in terms of interactions with the police. And they did it in a way that was respectful, uh, sensitive, um, you know, honored and respected everyone. And they did it during the time in the heat of the COVID, COVID pandemic, when we were, you know, shortly after really being shut down and quarantined, where still people were, you know, very much getting infected, they were out there getting that data. Um, and even though, you know, a lot of people in the community try to shut down the information that they brought, um, you know, their information was critical and important to really substantiate uh, what we are trying to talk about in terms of what people were feeling in the community, right? That not everyone has a positive interactions with the police and that people have uh, ideas and suggestions in terms of what needs to happen in this community in terms of public safety. So, um, and, you know, in ter and with Dee, you know, I knew her also from, you know, UMass, she was a professor at UMass. Um, she was, you know, at Amherst Media. Um, she's, she's done so much um, for our community. Um, and obviously my heart goes out to um, the entire family, um, her husband, Amilka Shabazz, and, and her, her children, her, who, you know, is, is just devastating that obviously she's not um, here with us in the physical, but I know that, you know, she's joined the ancestors and um, she'll be a feast warrior on the other side too. Um, and, and will continue to guide us from there. Um, so I'm still grappling with it, but, um, you know, want to just, just give her the, the honor. So I'll pass it back to you, uh, Allegra, because I know you wanted us to, to, you know, just have a moment uh, for her, but also I'm sure if anyone else wanted, wanted to say anything else about our dear comrade and ally and, mm -hmm. um, compatriot. Um, so if we could take a moment just to silently reflect uh, on the work that Dee has done to help us get here. I appreciate that.
his spirit will always be with us as we continue this march um and i just you know i just think about her way with words and how when we would work together to to craft statements things would just come out of my brain and she would really take the time and reflect and sit with them and put them together in such a way that was just so powerful and I really appreciated the way that she was able to communicate with people. Um, so I I hope that perhaps next meeting we can invite the CSWG and CSSJC members who are no longer part of the committee um, in to, for a, a, another, a little celebration of sorts. But I think today we honor her memory and send love to her family. And, um, we can, I suppose, move along to our agenda items. Um, starting with any announcements from people. party right on the 21st yes um so hopefully um folks will be there and then pamela i'm sure you'll you'll kind of remind us about i know you wanted us to do some tabling and stuff then you can work with us in terms of the schedules or whatever so and of course i know that you know there was a listening session yesterday uh, for the police search well two um, but we'll, we'll also talk more about that during the agenda. Um, and I believe there will be some time slots for the 18th and 19th that we can either attend individually or as a group or as partial groups, um, was what Paul had said. So, um, I don't think I have any other announcements. Um, yep, there's an event on, is it the 24th? September 24th, the Latin American Heritage um, his Month kickoff. Is, is that what it is? Yes, it will be the Latinx Heritage Celebration it is on the town common from 1 to 4 um, on Sunday the 24th. There will be some salsa dancing, a live DJ, and food and crafts for children. Lovely. Um, so we can move along to pub our first public comment period. Um, we do have one at the beginning and one at the end, just in case anything comes up during the meeting that the public would like to comment on at the end. Um, so if you would like to make a comment, you can use the, I have to read something, oh my gosh. I'm so bad at this formal thing. Um, okay. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself uh, by saying your name, preferred pronouns, and residential address if you want to. Residents are welcome to express their view for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The CSSJC will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, so if you wish to make a public comment, you can use the raise hand feature and then we will admit you to the, to the Zoom room. Um, I see Dorothy Pam has our hand up, um, our lovely town council liaison, and then Brianna. I, I just want to say I'm in absolute shock um, about Dee's death. And um, thank you so much for um, your nice presentation. Um, and, I, you know, we have to do more is all I can say. But thank you so much. That's it. Thank you, Dorothy. We have Brianna.
Can you all hear me? Yes. Awesome. I'm really excited to join you all tonight. Um, so many new faces and I'm so excited for the work you all are doing. Um, I'm here to public comment because I'm a little bit concerned about the search for the next police chief. I hope that this group can advocate for a virtual forum. I know that the town manager has already started um, in-person forums, but I don't think um, for people work working more than one jobs or people that have busier schedules that that's an ideal um, time for their voices to be heard. So I hope that this group can look at alternate ways that different voices can be heard to um, provide feedback and what they're looking for in the next police chief. And I think beyond that, I'm hoping that this group can talk about how they're working with the consultants to find the next police chief, because I don't think meeting with consultants to say what we'd like to see in a police chief is enough. I think we can all agree that we want somebody that's anti-racist, we want somebody that's kind, we want somebody that understands de-escalation, but I, I don't think that's where community engagement should stop. Thank you, Rihanna. Um, I see Ms. Pat has her hand up. Um, Ms. Pat, it says that you declined to be promoted to panelist. Ms. Pat, can you try it again? She lowered her hand. I do see uh, Joella Tarbutton. And... Uh, Ms. Pat's hands up again, too. Yes. You should be coming in. Can people hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, well, first of all, I want to welcome, you know, the new uh, CSSJC members. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, my name is Pat Onanibago. I was a former member of CSSJC. I uh, want to thank um, Allegra and Deborah for the kind words uh, with D. And um, I just want to echo what both of you said. And um, she left a huge uh, hole in our community. Our community is so lucky to have such a giant, a pillar of our community, a role model, very generous, not only with her time, with her resources. Um, I'm definitely going to miss her. But I just wanted to thank both of you for doing this, you know, to honor her tonight. She did a lot for our community and her legacy must continue. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Thank you. Yeah. And then we have Joella. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't see you. I don't know if you can see or hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. First of all, this is my first time attending this meeting. I'm a person from Northampton. And so you have somebody who's very distinguished. I met you, Deborah, once at a rally. It's police brutality in Northampton. And so someone told me uh, to come. So I jumped on now. So pardon my tardiness. And I didn't get the very beginning part of it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having this. And we're your sisters and brothers in Northampton, and I need this like I, 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 the doctor ordered it. So thank you for doing what you're doing. And um, that's all I wanted to say is to say hello and keep on keeping on. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anyone else would like to make a comment? You can raise your hand. Otherwise, we will have an additional public comment period at the end of the meeting. I'm not seeing any other hands up. So the next item is member reports. I don't think oh, Deborah has her hand up. Do you have? Um, yeah, and I want to thank uh, the, the previous um, public commenter for reminding me that, yes, I went to a rally in Northampton um, that uh, some groups put together uh, several weeks ago um, around police brutality that happened to um, a woman um, who was is not from this country, English, English is a second language. It was actually a video of the maltreatment and the horrific uh, police brutality that happened there. Um, she's actually bringing a lawsuit against uh, the police department. But I mean, I, I, I just got sick to my stomach, you know, um, when I saw the intimidation, um, the brutality of, of, of the policemen that interacted um, with her. Um, even at some point, her screaming, like, you know, call the police, because she didn't think they were the police. She thought that these were two thugs that were there accosting her. That's how bad it was. Um, and I mean, just brought tears to my eyes. And this is Northampton, a, a, a sister, you know, neighborhood, uh, you know, city over here that this is happening in. So this is not anywhere, you know, across the way in California, big city, New York. No, no, no. This is Northampton. Okay. Um, so, you know, the work that we're doing is, is critical, critical, like I said, and extremely important. Um, and there were, you know, a variety of different people there, you know, basically sharing, you know, their, um, interactions with the police and obviously, you know, saying that things need to change. And I don't know if you all know this, but Northampton actually just started their uh, responder, uh, community responder program, which they actually learned a lot from our community responders here in Amherst. Um, but I'm just so happy that they um, have begun their own program out there because obviously um, it's, it's very much needed. Um, so, you know, these are some of the things for the new members, you know, that obviously we do a, a lot of us just kind of do things on our own, but then obviously share um, when we come in and, and meet together. Um, because all of this is about us, you know, us Northampton of the towns banding together um, because we know that the divide and conquer um, technique is something that is utilized a lot to keep us apart as opposed to all of us coming together to do this work together. Um, which is really about, you know, caring for one another in humanity and making sure that there's no separation and no separation with the police either. It's not a it, us or them situation. It's about us and us, <laughs> you know, and treating everyone with humanity and equity and, um, you know, respect. Um, so the other thing too that I want to say, um, and I guess I'll say it here, is I think we had said it before, and I and I know um, Jennifer, you and Pamela, you all are very busy, you know, because you all only a two two person office that that's doing a lot. So you know, I don't want to take away from that, um, but just again another plug to make sure that we have the agenda items kind of sent to us a couple of days before. Um, you know, the meeting so that we can see what else to add. Cause actually there was one other one that um, I had sent to, I wanted to send actually, but it's not, it's not on here and stuff like that because that will be helpful, you know, to kind of ground us. So we know what, what to add in terms of agenda items. And then also to first to get a copy of the agenda a couple of days beforehand too. I need that. I need that copy because I I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, the word out about this meeting. This me meeting is critical, and I hope you all will also do that. Get the word out, send out the agenda to, to other people in your networks so that they can be on this call every month. So Because people need to know about what's happening in the community and what we're doing 
in, in this meeting. So for me, I need that agenda item. Um, and so, I mean, the agenda so that I can share, so that people have time to think about it so that then when they come on, they're already prepared um, when, when they're listening or when they want to do the public comment. So just a plug again, um, you know, so that we can get that going, keep that going. Thank you, Deborah. Um, may, may I add something? Yes, please. Um, so as, as someone who practices um, in Northampton as well as other courts, um, I, I am familiar with the reputation of the Northampton PD. And um, to Brianna's earlier point, I think it's paramount that we have the right police chief because Northampton has a new police chief, um, but the culture of the police department didn't really change. And so they do have a history of not treating people very well. Um, I have I've had clients with body cams slash cruiser cams where there is police officers kneeling on a person's head or a person's back. And this is, so um, I, I, I think, you know, I, I know it's Northampton and they're not Amherst, but if the culture doesn't change, then nothing gets changed. So while they have a new police chief, I think it's important that if we have the opportunity to influence who gets hired in Amherst as a police chief, I think it's important that we do that. Yeah, and, and just to kind of follow up from what you said, Avril, it's, um, yeah, the police chief actually with the the, the case that I, I talked about actually said that it was not excessive force, that that was appropriate force in terms of what they did. And that's what exactly, they, they maced her, they, they kind of kneeled on her, all sorts of different things. Um, you know, no, no the, the woman couldn't even understand what they were saying, had no compassion whatsoever, just kept yelling and swearing at her and everything. I mean, just... Just terrible, 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 terrible. So um, thank you for that. Yes, I think that's a point very well taken is that the culture, the culture might stay the same if a police chief doesn't come in and proactively do things to change it. So that that's a good note into, into kind of things that we would think about when we are able to talk with the consultants. Um, does anybody else have any update or report back? Um, or should we? So can I ask Pamela or Jennifer a question? Um, so Earl is on leave. Earl is the Cress director. Um, will we be getting a report from Cress in his absence? So I, I'm going to give both the update for Crest and DEI. Okay, thank you. Because um, there are some information to share. Yeah. So um, I can start with the at, but before I go into the Crest and DEI updates, I do just want to confirm, I saw an exchange of emails today that the town manager has uh, confirmed that the consultants will have a virtual session with um, with. Uh, a, a number of individuals. So, I mean, a lot has been going on, but from my understanding that that was confirmed later this afternoon. So there will be a, a virtual um, session. And I, and I, um, I, I thought that that information was sent out. I can double check to make sure I'm giving you correct information, but I believe that that has been established. Uh, the other um, thing I want to say about the police uh, search is that uh, the engagement that occurred over the last two sessions and the and for the next uh, session are meant to be um, engagement around the what's desired in a police chief. It's really the a job description um, uh, part of the process. It's not going to be the sole uh, mechanism for engagement on the selection of the of the uh, the police chief. It was, meant to be what does the community want to see in their next police chief so that as they do conduct the national search, the job position, the description reflects community needs. So um, I, I, I know I, um, I'm fairly certain this is not going to be the last opportunity for a community input on the police chief 
search or selection. So I'm going to start with uh, with DEI because I think that'll be fairly quick, and um, I think you'll probably have a lot of questions about the Crest update. Um, so uh, the both DEI and Crest. Oh, and before I go on, I just wanted to make sure that the new members. I know you had a chance to 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 meet me briefly, but uh, Jennifer Moisten and I are the. Um, Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the town, two members um, in that department, and we are the staff liaisons for this board as well as uh, four others. So you'll see us at your meetings. We regularly give updates and, and try to keep the, the board up to date on things that we're doing as well as respond to requests from, from board members for additional information. So that's who we are and why we're, why we're here. Um, so the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office and the CRESS Office are sharing an AmeriCorps um, member, uh, um, ASA. Um, our AmeriCorps member started on September 1st. Um, he is going to split his time between our office and CRESS. Um, and the focus of that position is to um, develop and conduct um, programming for youth. Um, so he'll be looking and has looked at the youth empowerment programs that were discussed in the prior community safety working group report. He's going to be meeting with various departments in town to start um, developing that. And um, we had hoped to have a, an event for youth, a you know, open forum for people to come and meet him and start for him to be able to start to gather information um, uh, at the, within this month of September, but because of other obligations, that's just not going to happen. So we have a target date of uh, early November for that engagement. Um, um, you've already met, mentioned the Latinx heritage. Uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the community visioning. So the town has engaged Dr. Barbara Love to conduct uh, training for facilitation training for community members and municipal staff to serve as facilitators for what would then follow um, uh, multiple meetings or, um, in the community around community vision or liberatory visioning. Those um, facilitation trainings will take place on the 25th and the 26th in the Bang Center in the evening. Um, we will provide dinner and we will provide childcare. Um, that link was sent out um, for registration and we're scheduled, I think, to meet uh, early next week with Dr. Love just to give her an idea about who has um, who signed up. Jennifer, you might know how many people have registered to date. I'm, I don't, I'm not aware of the numbers. Yes, so there are 14 people registered that are both community members and staff members, so it would be nice if you guys know folks to help spread the word. I'm going to resend the link out tomorrow, so then everyone will have it. I... Yeah. And our, our target is to get a, a group of 30, 25 to 30 people. Um, uh, in our office, we're continuing our rounds of doing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion training with municipal departments. We had um, a training or workshop with the Jones Library staff or members of the Jones Library staff this morning. We'll do a second section with them tomorrow. And that will leave the departments in town hall and rec. And we will be setting two dates. <clears throat> Jennifer's taking the lead on this to, um, to have workshops uh, and training for those departments. And uh, we have a target of October probably late October and early November for those two things to take place. Um, <clears throat> the block party is going to happen next week. Um, we expended some of our funds to get an actual tablecloth that says the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So people will know where who we are when we table at the, at the town's um, block party. Um, the library staff have volunteered to create some buttons for us that have, um, there will be buttons that uh, that have 
um, CSSJC that you can wear and keep. And then there will also be some other buttons that have um, just various uh, words. So equity, inclusion, diversity, access, um, as I think we said accessibility as phrases and reparations were the, were the words that we chose. And there'll be a, a variety of those um, as well as some other probably like, you know, candies that we'll have for give outs for our table. Um, right now, I think that we've had one member from, or maybe two, two members of the Human Rights Commission have said that they will also table. And um, and the three three members from this group have, have said that, th that they will table. It, um, I think it would be great if you staggered your time. So if I am remembering the details correctly, I think that the block party starts at five and goes to sunset. So if you each wanted to take um, an hour or 45 minute shift, um, that would be wonderful. The, the goal was, we have a very long table. The goal was to have one member from each of the various boards that the office uh, supports their presence so that you know we'd have a, bi a big presence. So that's our plan. Um, um, we don't have anyone who's volunteered to come from the Disability Access and Advisory Committee. So if more than one of you um, wants to be there at the same time, we'll probably, you know, have room um, for that to happen. So I'm trying to think. All right, so that is pretty much the uh, DEI update. I think, had we moved over to banks at the last meeting? Okay, yeah, so I think that's, um, pretty much the DEI update. The um, the next thing I'll mention is actually an update for both CRESS and DEI, which is that we will be attending the neighborhood resource fairs that are um, being organized by UMass. Um, and at least we'll be at the first two. The, the third one, which takes place on September 20, uh, 26th, we'll ha we have a conflict with because of our um, our facilitation training, but there's one tomorrow afternoon and then a um, a second one, I think on September 19th, if I have, if I'm remembering the date correctly. So there are a lot of uh, updates to talk to you about uh, CRESS, which as you know, has been, um, yep. And can we, because I, I think it might be a lot, like, can we do questions after DI and then do questions? Oh, sure. Yeah. CRESS? because so, I'm trying to like remember all the questions. <laughs> so um, so do you mind if we do? No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, so thank you for the for the report. Um, yeah, I do have questions um, in regards to it. First around the AmeriCorps, um, you know, helper there, you know, mm -hmm. that's good. That's great that, that he's on board. Um, however, or not however, and um, what are we doing in terms of finding a space and a place that is inclusive and safe and where um, young people will want to go to um, to actually be part of some of these like events that that he or whomever will be putting on. Right. Um, so that's. So so as I, I think I stated in one of the prior meetings, the town manager has stated that he is going to have, um, I guess, lead a task force to work on the um, securing a permanent location for the Youth Empowerment Center. Um, and um, so he is in charge of that aspect. And the DEI office is going to use the facilities that we currently have a, um, access to within the town. And as I had mentioned before and actually reached out and had some conversation with some of the members of the committee, uh, we're limited in, in town to looking at the library, uh, the Bangs uh, Center, um, large activity room. We do have an offer from Amherst College to use their space. And um, I did, um, at the bequest of this board, ask the town manager to inquire about the use of the space on Main Street that was the prior home of, is it, is it the Hastings? Right. Um, 
and I have not gotten any additional information about whether that space would be available. When I when I inquired about the space, I was told that there was an understanding that there was going to be um, another use that had been pr proposed to the owner for that space and that they felt that the owner would be pursuing the other opportunity. Yeah, so I think I think with that, um, you know, that you have several options. I think one of the things would be to, you know, really kind of survey some young people, right? You know, uh, I'm I'm assuming you all are connected to to, to young people in the community, um, but to really, you know, communicate with the young people and really get a sense from them what space would actually be a good space for them, right? And even with this, like with the AmeriCorps member, it would be good to get this person to really connect with young people to really find out what it is that they're looking for. You know what I'm right. saying? What it is that they want, that, that types of activities and things like that. Because remember, it, it's not just kind of having sessions and then hoping they show up. You know what I'm right. saying? It's more yeah. so how, do, how are they partners in creating um, you know, the, the space, the place, the what's going to be discussed and what is it that they want? You know, maybe they just want a hangout spot. Maybe they don't even want a session. You know, I don't know. You know, so that's the that's the point, right, is how do you connect to, to young people and really um, have them kind of create it? Because that was what, with CSWG, that was what our intent was when we were talking about a youth empowerment um, center. It was really a youth empowerment center led by by the youth and, and making sure that they're the ones uh, making the decisions and we as adults are really just supporting uh, right. those decisions. Well, in, in order to start those conversations, we've got to begin somewhere. So we need to at least have an invitation to have that initial conversation, um, which is what we're trying to do. Um, any um, programming that we have are gonna have to have some um, support um, by you know, either members of this office or other adults, because in order for us to engage in those spaces and have those spaces available to us, we, we need to be around. We're not allowed just to open the door and walk away. Um, but it is certainly our intention to, to engage with the youth and ask the youth what they want to do, which is why we want, you know, we need to get started. And um, um, unfortunately, there have been a lot of things that have taken time away from uh, having that as a primary focus, which is really what I had hoped to be spending a lot of the fall on, but it is still a focus and we're moving ahead in the best way that we can see possible. Yeah. So let me just add a clar clarification. I'm not saying to open the doors and then the adults flee. No, that's not what I'm saying because I'm part of a youth led uh, group in town and everything. And so what, what I mean by that, so let me make sure I clarify is that as a, as adults, you're there, right. To support, but really it's the youth that kind of are the ones that are leading the discussions are the ones that are there, but you are there to support, you're there to guide, you're there to assist, right. Provide the resources, things like that. But I'm, I'm just saying at that it's not the adults kind of taking over and leading everything. And also you might have to be creative in terms of how and how you, you communicate with young people. You know, it, it might not be you just saying, Hey, come, you know, have, have a session. You might have to go to where they're at. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to them coming to you. Um, so again, remember, um, you know, for, for Pamela and, and Jennifer, we at CSSJC, we're a resource to you all. We're here to help you all and to, to give you all kind of, um, you know, tips and ideas in terms of how to move forward. And so that's why, you know, myself and others, you know, like I said, I've, I've been part of a youth led organization for, you know, close 20 years at this point. So I have some, um, you know, expertise in it in, in terms of just, you know, how to relate and interact with young people. Um, so, that's why I'm, I'm sharing some information. Um, but I also have more questions. Um, I have questions around the community visioning. Um, you know, I just wanna get more of an idea of how is it that you all are doing the outreach to people um, to be part of this these meetings? Um, because obviously I'm very excited that, that Barbara Love is the one that's, that's doing the community visioning. Obviously she was one of the people that um, CSWG had had recommended to to you know take on the community visioning. Um, however, you know it can't be just the traditional outreach uh, methods, right? You know when I was talking and 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 
talking about um, D. Shabazz and her legacy is to say how they, you know, her, D and her group were able to go into the community and really outreach to make sure that those that we usually don't listen to would actually take part in some of this, you know? So that's um, the things. And, and not only, because I guess for the 25th and 26th is what, a trainer trainers? That's what- It is the trainer trainers. Yeah, yeah. trainer trainers. So not only for this portion, but also of course, even more critical will be for, for the participants too, right? So, and both though, not even, I, I don't wanna, you know, for, for the trainers and, and for that, because the trainers too are gonna be the ones that are gonna be helping with the visioning and creating the space, right? And creating the, the sense of hopefully safety for people to be able to um, and build a trust for people to be able to kind of um, communicate and be honest and things like that. So you're going to need, you know, folks that are from a variety of backgrounds and, um, you know, uh, be very inclusive. Uh, because if you're not hitting that target, it's not just about the numbers, it's about who is going to be a part of this, right? Um, and the other kind of note that I want to make is that I don't, I forget who was on the flyer. I know there was like, maybe it was the equity rate, the task force or something that was on the flyer. But I also want to make sure that we're, we're you know, kind of uh, mentioning that CSWG or, you know, CSSJC. I mean, we want to make sure that the, the, the correct history in terms of who made the recommendations, why these things are happening are, are, are put in some of these flyers, are put, are communicated at these meetings. Um, and also, you know, like CSSJC, we would definitely be happy to partner with you all, with a DEI to bring some of these things forward. And I think you it would behoove DEI to work with us again, because we have a lot of access. We know a lot of people, we can do a lot of the outreach. So kind of, again, I'm doing a plug to like utilize this. I, I don't feel like, we're being utilized as much as we could be. So again, and I, I know I've said this, I'm probably a broken record at this point, but utilize us. So that being said, I'm, I'm happy that you all did um, reach out to us to do the block party to the table. But again, um, if you all can coordinate that, because you know, I, you know, I, I don't know when, who's gonna be doing what at what time. So if you all could coordinate those spots and just let me know okay who's taking when blah 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 so that then we can accomplish that okay because me the sooner I know what time my slot is the better so that I can plug that into my calendar right so um we can assign slots to everyone but there was an email chain where folks were asked to uh suggest when you know if and when they were would be available um, and that was a few weeks ago Yeah, um, as well. far as the black party. Yeah. Can you resend that then? Because now we're getting closer and like this, we can get, you know, the schedule down. And that, and could we also include new members in yeah. that email so that we can yeah. make sure everybody gets it? Deborah was, were you, did you have any other comments or questions? No, I think that was it. Okay. I see Everold has a hand. I, I do. I um the, the term youth for me is very broad. So when we do say youth, who are we targeting under that category and how are we doing so? So in the um it is very broad in the community safety working group. Uh I think that the target was really um anyone under the age of 20. So like high school and medical school students primarily, but it is a broad term. And I think the focus for the AmeriCorps position working with both DEI and CRAS would be to um focus on middle school and high school students. Has there been a conversation about making an introduction to high school, middle school students at school? So there, uh, the, the Amercor uh, member has, I, I, I keep wanting to say intern, but that's not the proper term. So I'm stuttering a little bit over that. So the Americorps member has been on, uh, on staff for about a week. There are plans to have introductions at both the high school and the middle school. Um, and the, uh, Crest Department has a memorandum of understanding um, with the school department that the person will be working on. So we're 
we're a little bit slow off uh, getting off the ground, but there are plans to to um, facilitate the those introductions. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments or questions about the DEI initiatives prior to moving on to Chris? All right. Okay, so moving on to Chris, um, as you know, um, the Crest director, Earl Miller, is still out on administrative uh, leave, and I can't say more about the HR um, personnel matters other than to say that. Um, there has been uh, a, a vacuum in leadership at Cress in the interim while the director has been on leave and there have been conversations uh, with the town manager and other members of his leadership team about how to best support the department um, and to provide some management and leadership um, uh, during the during this you know interim a absence, um, so uh, this afternoon the town manager, myself, uh, the HR director, and the union rep for the responders met with the responders to discuss with them a proposal for an interim leadership team. The team has four members: uh, myself, um, Kat Newman, uh, Chief Nelson and um, Sergeant Janet Griffin. Uh, the four of us are, uh, are, are scheduled to meet to help to work with the department um, to ensure that it continues on its, um, on its mission. And um, we met with them today to discuss some of the, some of the challenges that they faced in the absence of having, you know, a leader in place. They've had a number of different concerns over the last few weeks. Um, uh, um, some of them sort of re related to a lack in leadership. Some of them are other sort of HR issues. For example, um, they did not receive their step increase on their anniversary date, um, pay differential. So Melissa is working to make all of those corrections around um, um, retroactive pay that's due, shift differential pay that's due. Um, the union rep was there to talk to the about supporting the, uh, the uh, responders and with some of the other concerns that they had about their work conditions, work expectations, all of those sorts of things. Um, let's see, the, the goal is to really make sure that we are setting up the department for, to be successful. Uh, one of the obstacles that had, uh, that had been to their ability to be more successful was, um, uh, their working relationship with the Amherst police department, the, Patrolman's collective bargaining agreement was recently uh, um, signed and adopted, which does provide for Crest to work with the uh, the police department. So one of the things that that uh, the previous director had tried to do was ride alongs, right, to build the rapport and relationship with the police department, and they did not take place. So now that there's a new collective bargaining agreement in place, um, some of those. Uh, legal issues uh, have now been addressed. There, the town is in the, currently in negotiation with the um, SEIU union, which includes the dispatchers to address some of the issues around the ability to, for the department to receive um, 911 calls or calls from dispatch. I'm at, at one of the last meetings that, um, the director had attended with this group, I remember him saying that he felt like his responders were ready to go, but there were some other uh, obstacles that needed to be overcome. And so we're working to sort of address those obstacles so that we can have the responders be able to re to receive calls from dispatch. So those things are all in process. Um, the, this plan, which is, I will say, still 
um, being developed was shared with the responders today. I uh, I am uh, taking the lead of the leadership team, so I'm the buck will stop with me. Um, I shared with them that you know community uh, um, public safety is not necessarily my area of expertise, but as far as working with them to ensure that they have a plan in place, a vision in place, policies and procedures in place um, to help them be successful. I am all in and I will be leaning on them to learn uh, about the work that they've done. Now that we're physically located in the Bang Center, we're adjacent to them, so I'm right next door. Um, I plan and have committed this afternoon to meet with each of the responders individually, to learn more about some of the challenges that they faced uh, individually as well as as a group. And the goal is to ensure that the department is successful and that it fulfills the mission that was established, you know, a year ago, a little over a year ago. Everald. Is, is there no number two at Crest? I mean, it seems as if, um, and you may not be able to answer, it seems like things are falling apart with the director being gone. Mm -hmm. Was Is there no number two? Yeah. So there were, so it's a, um, the, the answer to that question right now is yes. And that is because there was a change in roles. So Kat Newman, who I think most people might have presumed to be the number two person or to be Earl's, you know, assistant or primary, uh, took on a new role that had the title of um, implementation manager of the grants that have funded the organization. So the, the structure uh, was not clear as far as hierarchy is concerned. Um, uh, you know, I, and the current leadership team will be looking to um, make some recommendations around that. Is, is there a concern um, about delaying the responders taking 911 calls because there's this vacuum? No, the, the, so the, I, I, so I sort of feel that there are a number of different, different issues that are all occurring at the same time. So the responders were not receiving 911 calls um, prior to this administrative leave. And that was due in part um, to the fact that there were some legal obstacles that had not been cleared through the collective bargaining process. So, um, and those were separate and apart from, from the personnel issues. Um, one of the things that the prior director had said to this group when he last addressed the group was that he felt that his responders were ready to, to start receiving 911 calls um, and that the start would be uh, limited. So I, I, one of the things that's on my to-do list is to go back and look at the old minutes from this meeting, because I believe that in those conversations, he had identified, you know, three to five different um, call types that he felt would be uh, appropriate for the responders to get to get started with. There was also some delays um, due to like they they there was a delay in them getting transportation right to having their own vehicles there was uh, a delay in them um, receiving um, their um, their radios or you know their walkie talkies and so there have been a number of things that have sort of delayed the process but they they had they were not uh, receiving nine one one calls prior to the administrative leave so part of the and part of the task of the leadership team will be to make sure that all of the obstacles have been removed and to get them started on that process. And some of them, I think I think it's safe to say, I mean, I'm still very much learning about um, what has occurred and what hasn't occurred. I think it's safe to say like the, um, that the sort of physical, you know, they have transportation, the uh, uh, they have their, um, walkie-talkies or their radios, all of those things I think are in place now. 
but there's still some legal issues that need to be addressed. And, you know, you're a lawyer, so you know that that, that is a process. Did anyone provide a time frame as to when um, the legal issues may or may not be resolved? And I'm asking because a key part of CRESS is taking those phone calls. Mm -hmm. So it, there is- That's um, how you do intervention. Right, there is ongoing uh, conversations with the SEIU union as we speak, and it is hopeful that the that that contract will be resolved soon. Um, the I believe that the patrolman's contract was signed within the last 30 days. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Deborah. Um, so, I mean, for me, I'm just like extremely, extremely extremely concerned with what is going on um, with Cress, And I do want to hear more details in terms of what Cress has been doing for the past five weeks, because I've been counting the weeks since um, um, Earl Miller, the director, has been put on paid administrative leave. I understand that you can't talk about it, but one, I feel that this process is taking very long. And so myself, this group, and the community is, is looking at this. This cannot continue, uh, you know, t t till infinity. This needs to be resolved in terms of this process that he's re re responding to, which is fine. Obviously, there's a process, but it needs to be done as quickly as possible. As you all know, as the town knows, Crest is a new department. It's a department that was created by CSWG's recommendations that had a lot of resistance from the town from Amherst. So right now with this not happening and with the fact that there's no number two, that there was never any any type of plan in place to, to actually deal with the situation. So basically Crest has just been left to flounder really is what I'm hearing for the past five weeks. Crest, which is a department that is very important to what's been happening in terms of people actually getting resources and help and really being dealing with the alternative to police. Everything nonviolent sh should be and needs to be going through Crest. So now the, the viable department that was set up to do that is actually floundering with no leadership. And now there's this, you know, which I have questions about in terms of, of, of this. And, and, you know, and, 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 and it's just continuing on in that way. So for me, in terms of me talking about the, uh, the eye is very close. This is a microscope. I mean, everything that is happening right now, we are taking notes and is being documented. I mean, I, this is no joke because this is a, 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 a new department. As we know, they had a lot of resistance that people want to fail. Let, let's just be clear and honest. I'm not, I don't miss words when I come on this meeting. We know that there's a lot of people out there that want this department to fail. And so for me, I'm just really frustrated and very annoyed that really there hasn't been a plan in place. And also when I'm, when I'm thinking about the names that you talked about with yourself and Pluto, Pamela, and as you stated, you don't have this type of background. I'm just like, why hasn't one of the responders been tapped? This is a majority people of color uh, department. Why can't one of the responders be one of the ones leading and helping to make some decisions here? Are we sending a message that, you know, they're not capable of, of doing that? I question, right? That once when 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 the director was put on paid administrative leave, it was Kat uh, Newman that was put in as the, the interim. But why weren't one of the other responders tapped to 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 help lead or to lead a, a crest during the time since they're the ones that have been out there doing the day-to-day -day work with it? Why isn't there some type of training process to make sure that that they are actually understand how to do things too that is part of, of leadership? So for me that this is going on way too long in terms of the process. We, we're from the community, we're not hearing any information about when this process is going to be done in terms of the director. And then 
we're, we're not having any transparency in terms of how press is being handled. And now there's this, there's this interim team put together with someone, so it's Chief Nelson from the fire department, someone from the police department, um, and then Kat, and then yourself. So I, I think you raised- where, where is this going? That's that's what I want to know. Hmm. And where have they, what have they been doing for these past five weeks is another thing I want to know. And third, when is the dispatch going to start? When is the issues? Because this has been going on since for months. I remember um, Earl Miller talking about, um, you know, them being ready to do the dispatch back in May. We're in September now. Why hasn't that been resolved? Why hasn't the, the legal issues been resolved so that actually dispatch, that was part of the community safety working group uh, uh, recommendations. CRESS is a safety department. First and foremost, yeah. it's an alternative to safety. Mm -hmm. It should so be I, responding to safety calls. And why hasn't that happened? So I want three of my, my questions answered. All right, well, I, I can only really answer one of them, right? I think they're valid questions, but they're not questions that I'm able to answer. But I think you answered your own question about the composition of the team. So as a distinction to how Northampton created their department, which is placed in, um, in public health, the Crest Department has been placed in the town of Amherst um, in public safety, which is why the leadership interim leadership team includes members of the public safety departments in town right obviously we have expertise from the police and, and fire that they can bring to the to the table for these discussions and as i said to the responders today if if there is a way in which they can envision their work being done without being in relationship with police and fire, then they, you know, please tell me. But I think it's necessary for them to have relationship with the other public safety departments in order for them to be successful. Does that mean that they are uh, are um, are second to them? No, but they need to be in relationship in order to work together. And I think that it's going to be really important to, to for that to be a strong, positive relationship. So one of the things that I said to the responders um, today is that I'm going to lean heavily on their expertise. I want to hear exactly what they feel like they uh, have been doing well, what things have not been working. Uh, you know, it, there is a high learning curve for me. What I can offer them and what I have said to them is really important to me is mission. Um, I can provide insight. I can um, ask critical questions. I can help them with policies and procedures. But no, I don't have an, an, an expertise in, in public safety, which is why I think it's critically important to include other the other public safety departments in, it, um, in the conversation. So, I do envision that there will be ample opportunity for uh, the responders to be a part of the process and shoring up their department as they as they go forward. Um, and as you know, as you also know that they're they're in a union, and so there are some uh, parameters to how we engage with them because of their union. Their union rep was there for the meeting today. They have raised concerns to the union rep and there are processes for having those concerns addressed. Um, I think it was critical to have Kat as a part of the, of the team because uh, I think many people uh, in town, myself included, saw her as the second, although that was not officially um, her role, and she has a lot of the institutional knowledge about what has occurred and what hasn't occurred and um, discussions, but we're going to listen from everyone. All of the responders are going to have um, an equal voice and equal opportunity to share their experience and what has um, about what press is and how we can enhance it. And we want to, um, you know, I think the term that's been sort of bandied about is reset. Um, an opportunity to sort of reflect and see what's been really great about the work that they've been doing, what could be improved and how can those improvements happen. And I think part of that uh, of that process is connecting them 
to the other public safety um, departments in town. Okay, so I have I have follow up, Pamela, because I mean, first the way you're talking is almost as if the director's not coming back. I mean, when you're saying reset and so on and so forth, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of like reset from what? Right. You know, so I, are, are you saying there was problems at Crest? Is that what you're saying? And so now there's a reset. I mean, I I don't get that. So I, I want you to explain that. Second, I did not say for Crest not to have any um. Uh, communications or not to work collaboratively with the other departments. Of course, they have to work collaboratively with the police and and the fire chief and the ambulance and you know the MTs, all of the other public safety entities. I've always said that. I've never said otherwise. However, I'm not saying that now it, they have to be part of the leadership now leading Crest because they have a whole different mission and vision for their own departments. Their departments are not Crest. Crest is its own department and, and Crest has to be at the same equal level as all of their other departments. So my fear is that by having them be part of this process of the leadership process is that Crest is now going to change its mission and the focus of Crest is gonna become different. And so I hope you're 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 listening to me and you're hearing the the difference in terms of what I'm saying. I'm not talking about talk, working with them collaboratively. It's about changing their mission and changing right. what they're supposed to be doing. So I I think that we tried to be very clear today when we met with the responders that their mission is not changing. But as you know, as I've said it, I don't have expertise in um, in public safety, and so we've got to rely on on individuals who can bring some expertise. And it's not um, not only police and fire, but we are also looking to gain expertise for some um, expert for some national experts and from the relationship that um, that Director Miller described at Harvard. So Amherst is part of a cohort of like-minded um, or of other like um organizations and municipalities around the country whom the Kennedy School of Government is helping them to review, revise, expand on their policies and procedures to help them grow and develop this you know, emerging field. So I, what I envision is that the, there will be certainly lots of opportunities for responders to be a part of the conversation lots of expertise coming in from um, various different places, both locally and within the Commonwealth and nationally. And I am I, I use the word reset because I think there we're at a point where we do need to sort of take a pause and reflect and figure out how to make this department better and supported as it goes forward. Not to suggest that there has been any decision made about any HR. Um, our personnel manager, but we're at we're at a reflection point. If 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 that um, if that sounds better, because there has been, admittedly so, a lull right in the last and during the last um, during the last five weeks. And so, I think now is an uh, an opportunity to you know take a step back and reflect and sort of think about how we can shore up um, the department going forward. If I may, if I may just add to Deborah's comments, they they are in the same vein. And and, and Pamela, I, I understand and appreciate that um, you're the person here, so you're getting all of this. <laughs> but I agree with Deborah. Um, I do not think that law enforcement should be on the leadership team at all. It is counterintuitive to what Crest is about, because if they're on the leadership team, then they essentially. Um, dictate how and what Chris does, and that is not what the program is all about. So, so I, I appreciate that collaboration um, is important and we should foster that. They cannot be part of the leadership team that makes a decision as to what Chris does. Right, I, I don't think that they're, that they're, that that is the role of uh, Sergeant Griffin. I think the role is to provide some expertise about um, uh, about uh, public safety, not um, to dictate uh, what will happen with Cress. I mean, it, the town manager has been very clear that this is a new role and responsibility that I'm taking on in the interim 
Um, and I want to say interim, right? It is just uh, not something that that I'm, I'm seeking to be part of the portfolio for the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. But I am um, have been the person who's been selected to be where the buck stops as we try to shore up the department. So uh, my my question to you, Pamela, is you are already short staffed. So how is it that you have time to now take on a new responsibility? Hmm. Again, it makes zero. Yeah, I, I, you know, um, Jennifer and I are going to have a conversation tomorrow about how we're going to um, look at the responsibilities that we have for our department. Um, I think the, you know, the plan is that this is going to be um, short term, that this is not something, uh, a responsibility that will be permanent. And, um, you know, having worked in many different types of employers there are times when you have to take on a um, an extra responsibility for a short term and you just work really hard and make it work. And just like any of you, I, uh, you know, I had some reservations about uh, about taking this on. I had conversations with my family about how I'm going to manage my time because I will, you know, in addition to the meetings that we have currently with these four boards, I also need to be available to be with press responders um, as, you know, they're doing their community walks and as they're engaging with the community, some of their um, other activities, evenings activities have coincided and overlapped with DEI. So the neighborhood resource fairs are, are, are an example of that. Um, I attended them last year. So did uh, the Crest uh, department. So I get to, you know, wear two hats when I'm when I'm in town tomorrow evening. And um, Crest has been a great supporter of many of the DEI uh, efforts. Last year when we tried, when we held the, um, the National Day of Racial Healing after the Martin Luther King holiday, it was the Crest responders who I asked to serve as facilitators um, for those events. And um, so there's, there is some overlap and we'll just be very mindful about um, what responsibilities we can take on and, you know, do the work to the best that we can. Um, I, I think um, some of the uh, administrative tasks that I have taken on um, will be shifted. And I've had some conversations with the town manager about, about that. A um, few questions. And I just want to echo the concern that Everald and Deborah have so astutely pointed out about leadership versus collaboration and what that could mean in terms of, even if it's not the intention, what the community could perceive as to be happening if law enforcement is involved in CRESS leadership, even in an interim period. Um, so... The Crest responders are part of a union. Correct. And is that union separate and distinct from the other public safety unions or are they part of one of so they, those? So there are two separate uh, collecting and bargaining agreements for police and also two for fire. So for each police and fire department, they would have uh, a patrolman's uh, union and collective bargaining agreement and a supervisors. Um, the dispatchers, as I understand it, and I'm, you know, still coming up to speed with all of uh, all of this information, the dispatchers, as I understand it, are part of the same um, union as the crest responders. Um, but even within unions, sometimes there are some uh, some classifications or some distinctions among people who are part of a broad broader union. So they could have some distinct um, con distinct contractual differences, right, for different classifications of job. And um, I uh, have not reviewed all of the contracts yet, so I, you know, I I'm giving you broad terms, but it's my belief that the dispatchers and the um, and the responders are part of the same union. So, and again, I know this is not really your responsibility, but I just, I brought up the 
part A of the CSWG report because I know that the recommendation was to have more structured leadership. So I just want to read, I'm going to read very quickly, like what was per proposed originally as the leadership structure. So one full-time crest director, three full-time shift responder supervisors, an administrative assistant, three full-time dispatch supervisors, 12 full-time responders, and six full-time dispatchers. So in that structure, there would have at least been an intermediary between the director and the responders that have a supervisory capacity, not just an assistant to the program capacity. So I think, I think that that is an important thing to think about in terms of the structure. And I know that that would come with funding and it is part of the original ask that CSWG had put forward. Um, but I do, I do think that this is showing that the program as a whole is under-resourced in terms of the staffing level and staffing structure in a scenario that we might not have predicted. So um, I just wanted to draw the attention back to the original CSWG recommendations and remind people that they have not been fully funded as they were proposed. Um, but I, I was also looking at the job descriptions because Earl had sent them to me when um, there were openings so that I could send them out to people I knew. Um, and I noticed that it was actually the program assistant who was in their job description. It said that they would be a person to step up in the interim if the director was away. And so I understand Kat used to be the program assistant, but now she's the implementation manager and she does have some more of the institutional knowledge, but is there the program assistant? That knowledge? position is vacant. Vacant, okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that was my question. But I, I still don't understand why none of the responders uh, can, can be part of, I mean, can you all hear me or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm just going to shut off my video because it's saying that my internet is unstable. Um, I still don't understand why the responders aren't, aren't tapped um, for more of the leadership. I understand that they're in a union, but maybe one of them could be interested in, in taking on more roles. Um, I just am very concerned that uh, a, a majority people of color um, um, department when there's a situation where the director's put on leave then none of them could be tapped to actually uh, take on more roles and they're people of color so I don't know what the, the message is that's being sent out there and then like like I said and then what's happening is that it's the police that are being tapped to not be part of the leadership I'm sorry but that's that it just doesn't look good it doesn't sound good it doesn't smell good and like I said, I mean, this is a message to the town manager and to to whomever else is making, uh, uh, you know, these types of decisions, especially for you too, Pamela, because we know how it is, right? So the ones that are there aren't tapped. The ones who are of color aren't tapped because of whatever reason. But the message is being said, sense that they're not able to to step up and be leaders, which again is always what people of color get happen is they get devalued. And then though, then there's the person of color that is in another department and then and then you, she is then put upon, right? And you don't even have the, the uh, um, qualifications to really do stuff around the enforcement, but now you're put upon to be the super person of color to come in and save the day. I mean, you're being set up. You see what I'm saying? And it, so now you're not able to really do, do take care of your department. And now you're having to deal with a totally new department, which you know everyone is looking at very seriously and it's under microscope because we're not gonna let this fail. It's not going to happen. It's not gonna happen under my watch. It's not gonna happen under this group's watch or the community's watch. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if that's the intent, I, I just wanna say that it's not gonna happen. Not today, not any day. So I just want you to look at that because as someone that's that's from the outside looking in, that's what it looks like to me. So I just want to point out that three of the four members of this interim uh, leadership team are people of color. And I also want to state that we're at the very beginning of the process 
Um, you know, as I said, we I met with the, the CRESS responders this afternoon at 3 p.m. and um, have said that I will meet with everyone individually where they will have an opportunity to talk to me about what's going right, what's going wrong, what opportunities they would like to see. So all of that is unfolding as we speak. And there may be an opportunity for someone to come from the ranks. But at, at this point, um, I think that the, that the plan that we have in place will be a plan that supports the, um, the continuation and the development and, um, you know, the strengthening of the department. I certainly don't want to, uh, to see it fail. I mean, when I talked to responders today, I shared with them a personal story. So, um, uh, Kat and I, as supervisors of the AmeriCorps uh, member, had to go to a training that the organization held. And one of the things that was part of that training was to sort of reflect on your own personal values, leadership styles, how, how you operate in the world. Um, as it turned out, Asa, Kat, and I were in, and they used the compass as a way, whether you're north, south, east, or west. Um, as it turned out, the three of us were in, in, you know, in different directions, but the one thing that sort of made me choose my direction, which was North, was that it is mission dri driven. I am more concerned about outcomes and attending to the mission. That's going to be my focus. And I, at the end of my career, <laughs> don't want to be in charge of an organization that is failing. I don't want that um, for my own self nor do I want it for the town. So I'm trying to do everything within my within my possibilities and authority to make sure that um, that Cress um, is successful. And that includes, you know, taking on a little bit of extra work for a short period of time. So Pamela, um, I, I, I think we we all appreciate that. And I think we all would agree that that are your intentions. But the concern still remains, and and here's a, um, a, a very simple question. I think it's a, a, I think a very simple question. Right now, with no director, and there are four people essentially in this leadership role, who makes the decision to say Crest is now ready to take nine one one calls? Okay, that will be me. So not the four people, just you. Right, because ultimately I have the decision. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And and if I may suggest going back to something Allegra said earlier when she was looking at the structure of Cress, um, I, I I think I would say no one anticipated the leadership vacuum. So if I may suggest a director, a deputy director manager and a supervisor yeah. something there yeah. needs to be to deborah and allegra's point somebody internally who can say you know it's like this person's not here this person in charge and if this if two people are out somebody there has to be able to step up and what i understand if i haven't seen anyone's resumes and it's plausible that no one there right now has ever had a leadership role, but this is part of the goal is we teach leadership to these people. That way they can be elevated. So it's not to say where you start is where you have to end up. You're there and we train and we teach and that way they can be elevated. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think part of, I, I think that the strength that I will bring to the team is to really look at that structure, um, to look at the job descriptions, to look at the policies and procedure um, that are in place, because that you know those are where my areas of expertise lie, um, um, and you know, I am going to do the best that I can to make sure that the department is uh, successful, and that it's really you know it's meeting its purpose, which is meeting the needs of the community, um, and I, I I know that they have been. Um, I will say stellar in trying to do that in the absence of having a leader, you know, that they've been still trying to show up and go to community events. And um, so the goal is to, to, to have this group 
um, and the department be successful going forward. So, so speaking to that, Pamela, what have they been doing for this past five weeks? So um, they have been returning um, to calls. They've been doing some of the things that they have been. I have not, I mean, today is my first official day from 3 p.m. this afternoon of getting, um, of having this responsibility. So I, I don't have the details that, are, you know, that the director Miller would have um, previously um, provided to this group about the types of calls and the types of, of interactions they have, but I will be um, uh, gathering that information and we'll, um, we'll provide it to you. I'll actually try to provide you some information in advance of um, your next meeting. So I won't wait a month to provide you that, but as soon as I learn and am able to update you on some of these issues, I'll be happy to share it with the, with the committee. Well, I'm hopeful that before our next meeting though, that this process, that's going on to respond to, you know, Earl being on leave will be resolved way before that. And also to say that I'm just extremely concerned and I'm going to be looking at this whole thing, you know, with a hawk, with a hawk eye because I'm not happy with these decisions that have been made uh, thus far. And especially with this leadership team that has been put in place, I'm happy. Pamela, I do want to say thank you for your willingness to step up, but at the same time, you've already got so much on your plate. We want to hope that it won't be for a very long period that you'll have to be in this role. Um, and I think that perhaps revisiting the implementation team um, and tapping, I know everybody is very busy, but tapping some of the members of CSWG who are on that um, implementation team, if they are willing to provide any sort of guidance, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't be. This is their baby after all, as we've referenced it mm -hmm. over the years, um, and everyone wants to see it succeed. So so I, um, I will be meeting with the current uh, team members on Friday morning. And the goal is to try to map out um, the next 30 days. And um, and uh, it, that's in, included in, in, um, in some of my thinking about, you know, obviously we need to return to what the original design was and look at what's here and, and really try to make sure that we're meeting the needs um, that were defined for the, for the department. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else about Cress? Agenda back up, it went away. Um, so we have the Rob RFP consultant progress. Is there an update on that? So there is an update on that. I have met um, with uh, the members of the finance uh, department on town um, on two different occasions to uh, review and revise the language of what would be the first part. I, I, and I, you know, so much has been going on. I'm not sure where I left off in this conversation. So let me take a step back. I know that at the at the last time that we that we met, we I shared that the RFP process had failed for the original RFP. Did mm -hmm. I talk to you at all about what the what the plan was going forward to separate the contract? Okay, so let me go back and tell you. So, um, at the the last time we talked about the RFP for the Rob um, for the Resident Oversight Board discussed that that process had been uh, had not been successful. Um, I have um, since that time been in conversations with the town manager and also with the uh, members of the finance department about how we could restructure a procurement process for consultants to, in, um, to engage in the activities that were done, um, that were described in the prior RFP. Uh, what we have um, proposed now 
is a process that would look for technical assistance. So someone who would, uh, a consultant who would bring in uh, the expertise to uh, develop the policies and procedures, do the train the trainer for the initial members of the resident oversight board, all of the, what I'm calling the technical assistance. Um, I have a draft of that document um, that needs further review by the finance department, but then could be submitted. Um, and I know that the the next part of the of the process is somewhat um, controversial with this committee, but I I do still feel that there is a need to have some community engagement um, around this process leading into the technical um, assistance. So what we have uh, have thought about is a very limited sort of opportunity for members of the community to hear about the proposal for the creation of the, um, of the resident board and the aspects of the technical assistance. That document um, is in draft form as well. Um, it specifically uh, asks for consultants who would be able to provide um, um, their services in several different languages um, um, that would conduct outreach to underrepresented and marginalized communities so that there's some bit of community conversation before we jump into the into the technical aspects, which will um, also have some um, opportunity for the com for the community to get in. So we've moved that along. I sent the documents to finance. I think my most recent um, sort of back and forth with them on the language was today on one of the documents and then like two weeks ago on one of the others. Um, the procurement process is a queue. So unfortunately, each time that I'm bumped out of line, I have to address what uh, areas of concern that the finance department has identified in the document and then I need to get back into the queue. Um, at this point, I am, you know, if things go smoothly from this point out, then there would be the first of, of those um, of those documents or first of the procurement um, processes would probably begin in November. I had anticipated that they would begin in October, but I got knocked out at the queue. And I am being in, intentionally vague because as you, um, as most of you understand, um, you know, the laws around procurement for municipalities are very complex. We, um, the process has to be adhered for as far as like open bid and lowest bid and all of those things. So it's, it is moving, but it is moving a little bit more slowly than I had anticipated. Everett. Um, Two questions as a new person. What is the intent of the resident oversight um, oversight board? And given that um, the fiscal year already started, um, is this a long term project that's not in this year's budget? Or no? So the resident oversight um, board, um, as it's been called in the town of Amherst, would be a civilian um, oversight board for law enforcement. So the um, the community safety working group envisioned um, a strong board of civilians who would be able to review, investigate, um, examine um, um, actions of police conduct. And so the, the process that we're trying to do is to establish that, to get it up and running. Um, uh, I The original RFP, which I believe was some was made public, I want to say in February, I'm not sure now of the exact date, looked at uh, two phases, um, a phase that involved community engagement, like discussing of what what is a resident oversight board, what are the different models and stuff. And there were um, um, many members of this board felt that that work had been completed by the community safety working group and felt that that it was uh, repetitious and unnecessary. And then the second phase of the of the RFP 
was the technical assistance part, like someone who has um, experience in um, writing policies and procedures for the Civilian Oversight Board, um, training the initial board on, on their operations and just moving it from concept to actually, you know, to operations. Um, the, the first RFP I think was uh, overly, in retrospect, looking at it now was probably um, overly detailed. It had some very specific requirements um, that I, you know, personally still think are important and hopefully we'll get them about uh, the consultants having expertise in Massachusetts law, about the consultants um, being aware of the post commission. Um, to our knowledge, the uh, resident oversight board in, Ma in, um, in Amherst would be the first one created after the existence of the post legislation. And so we wanted someone who had a lot of expertise and who would be able to look at the at the legislation and then um, ensure that, you know, the board followed both federal and state and state law. Um, so that's the process. The funds are there and are in place. They're, um, um, you know, the, so there's there's not a fiscal restraint on this year's budget to prevent it from going forward. It's a matter of getting um, getting the technical assistance to to go to go forward. And, and a short follow up. The name was confusing to me. I understand civilian oversight board. Mm -hmm. When I when I heard a resident, I, I know. Asked, yeah, I exactly. Exactly. When um, so in the in the RFP, I use both terms because I think, and I don't, I wasn't here, so I don't know why the um why the term in Amherst was resident oversight board. Um, in the RFP, we made reference to um to both terms so that people would understand what we were seeking. Um, their services for. So I, I can speak to that in terms of why we we chose resident oversight board as opposed to citizen, because as we know, citizen has a lot of multi um, layered definitions, especially for, for folks who are undocumented, folks who uh, might have other statuses in uh, um, while they're here in, uh, in our town and we wanna be inclusive. And a lot of times citizen really also goes towards connotations of patriotism, connotations of all variety of different things. So we felt resident was a lot more neutral and it really did kind of depart from the usual quote unquote uh, names that, that have been made before. But again, we were also very intentional in terms of why we wanted to use resident as opposed to citizen. And sometimes citizen also even has a lot to kind of can can bring in military type um, connotations and things like that. So yeah, we were very purposeful in terms of using resident over citizen and really departing from using that that language, um, that, that so, term to- uh, So not citizen, about. Deborah, um, civilian. Oh, I thought it was citizen that you were saying, because a lot of them say citizen uh, uh, oversight board. No, I, I'm civilian versus citizen because I, I yeah, do. But a civilian, there. I mean, we we didn't get that. A lot of a lot of them were, were called um citizen oversight board. So in terms of civilian oversight board, the same type of thing, militaristic, um, you know, has different connotations that really wouldn't be as inclusive as resident. I also have some questions for Mm -hmm. I can you I can I can barely hear you, but yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, now, now I can. Okay, sure. Thank you. So um so my question is more so in terms of timeline because you know, again, you know, having the resident oversight board in place is going to be critical for folks to be able to um bring forward any complaints because as we know that while this this um group is not in place, this board is not in place, people do not feel comfortable complaining about the police. And so I do wanna hear a, a, about a timeline in terms of uh, the, the resident oversight board. And then just a quick kind of tip, I guess one of the things Allegra, and I don't know if we even thought about this for you know, the new members um, and maybe this was com communicated to you all, but 
one, obviously, the, the important thing is to read those reports from the CSWG because one of our, and if you look at the charge, I'm assuming you all have been given our charge, but that's the other part, like to go over the charge for the CSSJC. But one of the uh, primary charges is to, um, you know, put into place the recommendations of the CSWG as one of its main um, um, charge, but also obviously it's, it's evolutionary, right? And we're gonna take on other things too, but this is the big foundation of CSSJC. So that, and then also one of the things we learned when we started with CSWG is that a lot of times members don't know how actually the town kind of, um, the town processes work, the town budget works. Um, so I think, you know, folks need to be given some information in regards to that. And then also, um, if you all have questions after after that type of information, really feeling free to meet with any of us that have been part of CSSJC, right, on a one-on-one, -on -one, because I know we can't meet like three or four, blah, 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 because of, um, you know, open meeting laws, but one-on-one, -on -one, if you all have other questions, you all can also meet. So I think that's some of the things that we need to think about when we're talking about onboarding. I don't know if any of that has been given any, <laughs> any thought to these, to the new members, which, you know, it's, I know it's a lot thrown at you all. Um, and we need to, you know, of course, provide you all with the information so that you're equipped to, to be as um, helpful as possible. I appreciate that, Deborah, because I do think that at the beginning of our group meeting, that was sent to all of us, but I did not send it to the new members. So I can send the CSWG reports, the seven gen report and I think we did the leap reports too I think those were all part of our first packet that we had um and in terms of the budget on the town website I can I think I have like a how to look that kind of stuff up um and usually the cycle starts again in November um so I think I will some sort of budget. I see Jennifer has her hand up and then also Nadine in the audience has her hand up. Um, I know there's another public comment period at the end of the meeting, but I, I am fine having a question as needed if others are fine with that. Um, but first, Jennifer. Yep. So I just sent the information with the link to the CSWG and somewhere there is a breakdown of the budget and how it works. It was the same PowerPoint that the CSSJC received. So I will forward that as well. And please wait for public comment as opposed to asking or allowing individuals to answer questions or ask questions. Thank you for that. Why is that Jennifer? Just to get some clarity. It's the way that the agenda is written. And so public comment happens under, she's got to make the same statement again about public comment. So if we just, we've got two more items, I think that hopefully will go pretty quickly and then we can open up for the second public comment. I'm also, I am looking at the time and I'm wondering if, um, people would feel comfortable pushing the police and schools discussion to the next meeting. Um, I think partially it would be helpful to have an, the MOU with Cress, but I don't know. Um, I mean, I think the police chief search is something we need to address tonight because of the meetings coming up. Um, but if, if people are okay tabling that agenda item for next time, um, and perhaps, perhaps for next time, we could invite the AmeriCorps volunteer to come meet with us since their role will be working with um, the youth. So perhaps that would be a good conversation for that person to be involved with as well. Oh, and if and if things aren't resolved before our next meeting um, and the leadership structure is still the same, I want to meet actually with all four of the, the people who are in the leadership structure because I have lots of questions. So I'm happy to um, invite uh, Asa to the meeting. Um, we have a very specific time frame under our contract. So we need to make adjustments um, if we um, have him attend the meeting, but we're, we can surely accommodate that. 
Um, and ASA is working uh, Monday through Thursday on the on Friday. They have uh, um, programming for uh, AmeriCorps that they have to attend, but we can make an adjustment for for him to attend the next meeting. Um, and uh, I can certainly um, extend an invitation to members of the team to to come. That would be great. Jennifer, you have your hand up still, or did you not take it down? Um, um, oh, I'm sorry, but I was um, on the police chief search. I don't, um, I don't, were you not able to find that the virtual, it wasn't, the, okay. I, I, um, so I got an email at five, what was it 5 15 today from paul buckleman um and for whatever reason i can't use my gmail anymore on my laptop but um so it says the police and let me know if this is not the right email it says the police chief search consultants have given us times to meet with you on monday and tuesday next week their availability is shown below in highlighted yellow Please email or call with the time slot you would like to promote efficiency. We will schedule up to two people with the consultant if needed. So um, I think that email, I think, is for your one-on-one -on -one conversations. But there was, I mean, I, I so much is going on. I could be wrong, but I am 90% certain that there was another email earlier in the day that confirmed um, a time and date for virtual um uh, for virtual um, meeting. That would be open to the whole community? Uh, that would be, um, yeah, open to the, uh, to, the, um, to the entire community, but I thought that it had come at the request of uh, Brianna, um, Deborah, and Miss Pat that you had had communications with him about holding a separate virtual meeting and he had responded that that had been arranged. I can double check. Um, check for that uh email in the morning but i'm 99 percent certain that that was a that that was a yes yeah so just so just to clue everyone in um what happened is that uh, cswg members which i'm a part of uh we were communicating with the town manager to ask for a third uh, virtual forum that uh, cswg members would facilitate to just to make sure that there would be an opportunity for those who uh, voices might not feel comfortable to have gone to, to the sessions that were in person or not had the availability. Like for instance, for me, I wasn't able to make any of those, those time commitments. When I work during the day and then in the evening, I have commitments with, with, with my child to, to bring to sports. And so I'm sure a lot of other parents were in the same um, you know, situation as I was. And so CSWG basically um, been communicating with the town manager to ask for the consultants to be present and for us to be able to have that because we're going to outreach to a lot of people to make sure that they have that opportunity and to have a virtual opportunity as opposed to it just being in person. And so, yeah, Pamela, if that's the case, I would be really excited about that because, yeah, as of, you know, yesterday and even this morning when we were um, emailing um, the town manager, we hadn't heard any confirmation. Um, so, yeah, as soon as we can hear some confirmation, that would be great so we can start um, outreaching to, to the community. Yeah, I'm, I am 99% certain that I saw an email that confirmed that, but I, and I can send it in the morning. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. So it looks, and Jennifer, I don't know, can you screen share the, the email? Because I forwarded it to you, I think. Um, would you be yes, I put it on a Word doc, so I okay. will enlarge it just so because your email address was on there. Right. Thank you. Can you all see, or does it need to be larger? I can see it. 
Um, so I guess the question would be, do we as a group want to try and meet both individually and as a group together with the committee or the consultants? Um, Oh, Deborah, can you move a little closer to your mic? I said I would rather meet as a group. As a group. I would also agree. Anybody else have thoughts on meeting as a group versus individually? Group is fine. And I was just looking to find um, a time. <laughs> That's always the question, isn't it? Um, I know for me, the 19th um, will be difficult. Okay. So the Monday would, would be better. And obviously, like, after five or, like, five and on. And I'm, like, a little bit. So I'm assuming that the way that this is written, that block, right? I don't know. I'm not screen sharing. <laughs> I just see my mouse. Um, But the five o'clock Monday, yes, so five that block is from five to five thirty I'm assuming is that the case um Jennifer or Pamela I'm I'm sorry I uh muted myself and turned off the camera so that I could try to see if I could locate the other um of the other email that I referenced previously I um this is the first time that I'm seeing this document but I'm assuming as you said that that is a block of time that's available so it looks like um the only evenings are for consultant one uh, is that on the Tuesday the 19th evenings and the other ones are um are are um, are in the day for consultant two, um, yeah. on the on the on the Monday. If I'm reading that correctly, so days I think are difficult for me, and I imagine most other people who are working a full time job or have a class schedule to to keep up with. Um, so I don't know if. Five o'clock to five thirty on Monday would be enough time for us to meet as a group. Um, but is that a time that would mostly work for people? If yeah, I mean, I, I could do like we could propose like five to six, and then see what the, the consultants can do. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. If people... And, and virtual. <laughs> yes, right? Is This is, I believe these are virtual sessions. Is that, let me just see if I can pull up the email back up again. Um, it does not, their relation... Um, it does not say whether or not it's virtual, but I'm, I suppose that's something that we can ask or request. Um, yeah, that's request. That's and request. I, I think it makes the most sense and, and perhaps one hour versus three hours would be, yeah. you know, what look good for them <laughs> um, so propose Monday five to six as a group with consultant one
Can I just, I'm just going to, you guys all on my screen for a second, can we give like a thumbs up emoji or something like that, if that works? Is that the official way to vote in these meetings? No. Um, I think that'll be fine. Just for the new members, just so you all know, we're not big uh, proponents of, of Robert Rule. <laughs> I don't know who Robert is. I never met him, so I'm good with him. His rules are a bit stodgy. Um, okay, so I will reach out to Mr. Bockelman and see if that is a go for us as a group. Um, and I guess if not, I suppose I will ask if I can just forward that to everybody and they can choose their own time, which is not ideal. But, it yeah, would... but what the, the, the first one seemed like either five to six or even like five 30 to six 30, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. If we're just going to do with one consultant. You right. Know? Right. So, so I think either, or like, you know, five to six or five 30 to six 30, I think yeah. we should be able to work for consultant one. And like you said, it would be one meeting as opposed to them having to meet with a bunch of us, you know. Right. Um, are there any big themes we as a group want to put forward right now, like in terms of things we think we should agree on or or do we, how do we foresee this conversation moving forward with the consultants um, well I'm, I'm fine either way uh, in terms of like you know either we can talk about it now or we can just kind of um you know share when we meet with the consultants um i just want to make sure to kind of communicate while we're here in, in the meeting, right, this public meeting, um, to, to kind of let it be known that this process just needs to be as transparent as possible, mm -hmm. even if it is just a process at this point to get the job description. Um, but this is the job description that's going to get the person who's going to be in place to, to, to you know, guide uh, uh, the police department, which as we've heard for these past couple of years, we wanted to go in a different direction. We wanted to be a transparent department, a department that's going to be welcoming, inclusive, respectful to all people. Um, we want to make sure that it's a department that's going to have translators there, that's going to have interpreters, it's going to, so, so on and so forth, right? So we want this process to be as transparent and inclusive to get the feedback from, from people. So we just want to make sure that as much opportunities as possible is being given for people to contribute and for feedback to be shared. Um, and then I know that one of the things to kind of just put out there, you know, one of the main things obviously for me is that, you know, you know, the, the process and the, the applicant applicants know that they, you know, about them being anti-racist, right. As being one of the uh, a critical thing, but also whatever we end up doing in terms of like, when there's like, um, you know, credible finalists that 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 end up happening at some point is to make sure that there's a forum for the community again to be able to to meet with them. Or maybe even several forums, some in person, some virtual, so that we're able to to meet with with these folks, so that they're able to ask questions. Um, and then. Well, I think I, I lost my train of thought, so I'll, I'll come back to it because there was another piece that I wanted to share, but other folks can chime in. Does anyone else have anything that they think they want on a list? Um, I, I did write down the culture of the department as well from the earlier um, discussions. But... I just want to add that there was trans or interpretation and translation services available as well as child care at the evening event. Great. And there was translation and inter interpretation at the um, day event. Wonderful. Anybody else have anything to add at this point? Or do people feel comfortable coming with um, suggestions during our slot? 
oh, this was the thing that I was I was remembering is just to make sure that our group as well as CSWG and then any other group that's like HRC or reparations if they want to be part of it is that more of our membership is. Uh, plugged into every part of this process, right? In terms of the search committee, that there's actual members um, from our different groups on the search committee so that the search committee itself is as di diverse and inclusive uh, with people from all different backgrounds. So that again, it can be people that, are, um, you know, have the, the 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 kind of the passion right to 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 choose and, and the time to choose the next uh police um chief but to make sure that we're uh, um involved in every part of the process um throughout the search process i agree with that um and i think just a thing to add from our earlier conversation is having somebody that's willing to collaborate with the crest department and have their dispatchers direct calls to press. Uh, I'm sorry, I feel like there have been a hundred emails over the past couple of days about this process um, and I can't find the one from Paul that I'm looking for because I, I, I don't want to misquote but I believe uh, so there is an online portal that they've started um to submit things to submit comments and characteristics they would like to see in a police chief um I can't find it because <laughs> I, I thought there was some clarification on asking a member of CSSJC to be on the committee and now I can't find where it went. Um, Pamela, do you have any recollection of whether that sounds like something that we are supposed to think about? Um, it is. If I'm remembering correctly, I thought that there was going to be an ex an, uh, an invitation extended um, to members of the community, um, to the CSSJC, as well as HRC to be uh, on as part of the search committee. Oh. But I would have to, you know, I'd ha I would really have to double check. But that's my recollection is that there will be representation from both groups as part of the search committee. But that person has not been identified yet, and we would potentially be the identifiers of that person. I uh, that I'm not certain of. I I, I um per perhaps he would as a board be able to make suggestions, but the appointment is the town manager's appointment. So yeah. I think it's ultimately his decision who he appoints to the board, okay, or to the search committee. Okay, wait, here it is. Police Chief Advisory Screening Committee, I will be asking for CSSJC to select a member who can serve on this committee. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know, I don't have a time frame for when that is supposed to happen. Oh, let me look at the Police Chief Search Memo. Allegra, you were reading my mind because that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks as if recruit and appoint members to serve on advisory screening committee does appear to be an August September issue and finalized criteria for police chief seems to be under September. Um, When does the, let's see. I'm not certain of the time frame, but considering yeah. the fact that the, that they haven't 
written or posted the job description, I think, you know, there's a little bit of some time there. Okay. I mean, I think if worse comes to worse, perhaps we could call if we need to have a meeting to have a, you know, just a meeting to appoint a person or to put forward a name, perhaps we can call for a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would just have that on the agenda and nothing right. else. Um, and hopefully that would not be very long. But I guess our people would people be interested in that? Is there anyone who is like, yes, please me? Um, I would be interested. Okay. Well, then maybe we don't have to have a meeting if um if no, <laughs> no I, I I would be interested also. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So we have two potential candidates. Um, so why don't, can we, hmm, let's say, perhaps we could look at a tentative meeting date for the, let's say, the last week of September if needed, if if they say, oh, you have to have somebody appointed by um, I'm willing to to give it to Evril. <laughs> You're willing to give it to Evril. Yes, yeah, Evril can take it. <laughs> Quit with that. All right. My life is busy enough. <laughs> so. All right. Um. Well, then maybe we have an answer. Um. Um. And then the other thing too for the next agenda item would would like for for the next meeting to vote in a um co-chair okay so i think that's a good idea are we are we good on the police thank you Everell, for your service yes. <laughs> are we so we're good on the police chief search topic we will propose monday five to six as a group if that does not work out we will identify our own times which is less ideal So if if for whatever reason the Monday from five to six as a whole group would not work out, is the plan B to just identify our own times and meet individually, or is there a way that Tuesday evening could work? Because I think Tuesday, that Tuesday, yeah, it's not going to work unless it would be like later, like after seven, like seven and on for me, because I have a meeting from six to seven, okay. six to seven, yeah. Jennifer, do you have, or I guess maybe I can see, it. let's say today. Okay, what did they say about, I'm sorry, it's so hard to having all these little screens around. Um, it looks like they would have like 6.30 to 7.30 or start, you know, 7 to 7 30. Yeah, um, yeah, seven, yeah, seven to, I, I could do that. Seven to 7 30 yeah. as a second option. Um, okay, and is that okay with everybody else that time slot on Tuesday? Simple thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, that, that looks like a thumbs down. <laughs> That's not going to work. Um, why don't I get back to the group? Because I can email the group for agenda setting purposes if the five to six does not work out on Monday. doesn't look like there's other evening.
unless um, Why don't I ask for five to six Monday? And if that does not work out, um, we can meet. Would would six thirty work for you, Freka? I mean, could we have like somewhat of a revolving door of people coming in and the core group coming or? Um, I was just going to say that um, we could have those two options. Okay. And it would be easier to adjust knowing which one works. It is on Tuesday. It's not ideal, but okay. um, an adjustment could be made. Okay, perfect. Um, so I will email Paul after this meeting and get back to you with the final decision. Um, anybody else with anything about about? the police chief search process. Um, okay, not seeing any other hands. It looks like it's time for our second public comment. So now I have to find the thing I have to read again. All right, public comment. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, residential address. If you feel comfortable doing so, residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. CSSJC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on the matter raised during public comment. Um, so I see two hands up right now. If we can bring Nadine in and then Pat and then Brianna. Um, and if anyone else wishes to speak, they can raise their hand as needed. Hello, my name is Nadine Hazard. I am a Amherst uh, resident um, off East Pleasant Street. Um, I have something I've been waiting and I have something to go to to do that. I just wanted to first and foremost talk about the fact that um, I did attend yesterday the police um, uh, talk. Um, there's still a lot of um, unclarity with regards to the Cress, what's going on with Cress. And that leadership team, I'm not quite, I'm not quite understanding how much responsibility that the the city keeps adding on to Pamela, and what her role is, and I'm, you know, really questioning all that. And I do think that the process or whatever's going on with the director needs to be done ASAP because it's not helping, um, you know, community understand what's going on with Crest, and we still have no transparency. And then the other thing I just want to keep mentioning is that whatever venue, whatever we do, I'm grateful that we're finally having something virtual. We need to continue to have kind of give people access virtually so that people can come in, um, you know, at their convenience and come in and provide um, commentaries. But other than that, I just want to thank you for guy, uh, the work that you've been doing. I see that you're processing different kinds of parts. Um, this is not easy and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. I'm bringing Miss Pat. Hi again. Can people hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Pat and Annie Barco. So, wow, I have a lot to say, but I will shorten it as much as I can. First of all, I want to thank Ms. Pamela for your presentation tonight. It looks like, you know, you've been doing a lot. 
and I didn't more wrote to you, you know, I'm very concerned. So I worry that you're taking on so much. What I want to comment about the CRES department, I want to make few issues very, very clear tonight about what CSWG recommended. And Deborah has touched on it, but we were very clear that CRES is an independent department that can collaborate with other safe, public safety independent departments, meaning APD, the, the fire department dispatcher. So to have four people on leadership team, as an employer myself, it tells me there is so much chaos in our town. This is a no-no. It's a no-no because the fire department, their role is different from Crest, even though some are overlap, should not be doing this. Ms. Pamela, you already said, you know, this is not your expertise. The police being part of this leadership team just made my stomach like ground. What are we doing in this town? What message are we sending to say to have a police officer, I'm not attacking the individual, it's not about the individual that was asked to step up. But what is the, you know, what is the, what is the message that we're sending out there? This is not the purpose of what CSWG had recommended. I think what was not mentioned tonight, I mean, Allegra touched on it. I think the focus should be on the power holders of this town for not fully funded CREST program that the, the way CSWG had recommended. So our town manager, our finance uh, uh, finance committee, and our town council. I hate to say this, I kind of knew that CRES was set up to fail. So this, this does not surprise me. It's not because, you know, the director was placed on, on leave but it was not sustainable. The funding is not sustainable. There is no second in command. Also to be clear, you do not need anyone with public safety background to run crest. I wanna remind us all, it's all about people who have people's skill, social work skill, people who have experience dealing with people. So I don't know why it's so hard that we can't be creative in appointing someone, some retired social workers or psychologists or somebody to, or even within, even within. What message are we saying? We have a lot of BIPOC responders. We couldn't train them to, to take on the role. What CSWG recommended was to have a director, to have supervisors. I don't want to repeat what you know, Deborah already said. And CSWG recommendations were ignored. What the town holders want to do in this town is to erase CSWG work, period. And it's not, it, it will not work because we're here to stay to continue to push. So this was set up to fail, regardless of what is happening to that, you know, to the director. This was done because the we had a lot of resistance in doing this. So no surprise right there. I also want to remind us that CRES, we were very specific when we pushed for these two departments, CRES, Pro, CRES department, and DEI department, we were very clear. It has to be BIPOC-led. 
it has to be bike park led at all times. So I just want to, to put that out. Moving forward, I want to touch base a little bit about the, the process for the police uh, search. Thank you, Ms. Pamela, for mentioning that, you know, the town manager had a change of mind to include that. I'm very grateful that that's happening. In the process, I read a memo that the town manager sent to the town council where it stated that, um, so it looks like the three finalists will not meet the public. So I'm urging the CSSJC to put pressure on, you know, on our town, on our town council. The public need to meet the three finalists before, you know, our town manager appoints, hires the, you know, one person. I think it's the, it's the right thing to do if we really want to continue to engage the public. So that's what I want to say about that. I, you know, I won't talk too long. One more thing I wanted to mention is that Black Business Association of Amherst Area Group are still hurting. That is upper funds left. And the last time that it was discussed at town council meeting was during summer. We don't know what is happening moving forward. Um, and it needs to happen quickly because there are still businesses who have not reco uh, recovered from, from, uh, from the pandemic. And that brings me to the fact that BBAA, we're calling for the building commissioner, building commissioner Morin to resign for racism against black owned club Hazel for delaying opening for eight months, leading to substantial amount of business revenue loss. We're calling for him to resign. Why he allowed a white owned entity uh, club, nightclub Drake to open on time and was even allowed to open with temporary ramp that was uh, in violation with the state uh, building code, while the two black owners were not given that choice. So, you know, I am urging CS CSSJC and all activists and residents in this town to support BBAA in calling for building Commissioner Morel to resign. It looks like when white men administrators misbehave in our town, it get overlooked. But when there is issue with administrators of color, like the assistant superintendent in our school system was put into administrative leave. We have a black man, Chris director, put on administrative leave. And we have a white man who caused financial harm to two co-owners of a business and people felt like nothing. They lost their, they lost their business, their livelihood. They were evicted because eight months of not having any revenue. I used to run a restaurant, so I know what I'm talking about. You can never recover. Food business is a highly competitive business, people. And also, is, you know, rent, rent is very, very expensive. And guess what? The building commissioner allows commercial landlord in this town to rent out junk places, build, buildings that have structural violations to tenants, then to pour in money. People should not be spending more than $100,000 or seventy five to upgrade buildings that some of them should have been handled by the commercial landlord. So, so he needs to, to move on. He needs to resign. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. I see Brianna and then Alicia. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to make another public comment after hearing that press update. Pamela, I wanted to thank you for all your time and energy and stepping up to support leadership right now. But I also just wanted to voice a huge concern that I have as a member of the community and also as one of the co-founders of CRESS. I think four people in leadership is a lot of cooks in the kitchen. And I'm really, really concerned that police is stepping in to manage the program. When we were investigating what type of alternate public safety services that the community would need to invest in. The CSWG heard constant complaints on the gaps that the APD was unable to fill. So I think that this reset could be really damaging to the longevity of the CREST program. I also just wanna amplify what Deborah and Ms. Pat had also mentioned about Kat stepping in and leadership. I do think that Kat is incredible, but I, her role that she was hired to do was more around grants and deliverables. So I'm really worried about her stepping in um, on the leadership team. I know there are longstanding members of the CRESS team who have been in Amherst and have experienced the things that we envision CRESS would de-escalate and resolve. So I, I hope that you take these comments to consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. And we have Alicia. Alicia, you're muted. Sorry, can you hear me? I have a, a time trying to get myself to unmute. Yes, you're uh, good. My name, thank you. My name is Alicia Walker. Um, I am an Amherst resident. Um, I was also former co-chair with Brianna of the CSWG. Um, so first, I want to thank you all for your work. I know how incredibly difficult and time consuming this work can be. And I do appreciate P Pamela really jumping in and taking on so much work, even just in the name of DEI. Um, and so I do want to highlight that because I, I do recall conversations of needing help with just the DEI work. And so that you're willing to even further take on more work to try to, to at least try to support the town in these initiatives, which, which can also be seen as DEI initiatives, I think is really incredible. Um, and I appreciate that from you. Um, so yeah, there, like Ms. Pat said, there's, there's a lot that was talked about during this meeting that is very concerning. And I'll try to keep it brief because most of what I had wanted to say has already been touched upon, but I just want to like further emphasize a few points. Um, first, Cress, you know, it's a, it is a new department. And I think we did anticipate in a new department that things would go wrong. Um, so like, it's not surprising that things are going wrong, that things are failing. And I think that this is an opportunity for us to reassess and to make corrections. And so when I'm thinking about some of the things that we talked that were talked about during this meeting um, that delayed Crest in any way, or that is causing any issues like vehicles or the fact that there is no assistant director, those are all things that came through from the original recommendation from the CSWG. Before CRESS was ever even a department, the CSWG said that CRESS will need these things. And because these requests were ignored, now there are challenges. And so I think we're learning now that we made some bad decisions. And so I think it's time to correct those decisions and start to make better decisions. Um, Crest needs to have an assistant director when we're looking for the director. We cannot put ourselves in this position again. That's something that I don't even hear people talking about, but that again came through as an original recommendation and needs to be considered when we're thinking about moving forward, whether or not Earl returns. Um, the leadership team is very concerning for all of the reasons that everyone has already mentioned. Um, and my concern is Again, with the mission changing, I think that's something that Deborah brought up. Um, and I think, to be honest, it's almost completely 
unreasonable to expect that there's no way that the mission would change under the leadership of this group of people. Uh, because how can their mission not change when the leadership is comprised of people who specifically tried to fight back against the creation of the department itself and who had issues with the original core mission itself from the beginning? There is absolutely no way that they even have the capacity to withhold the core mission of the department. Um, and I think that is the most concerning part uh, because it's one thing to just sort of like say we need placeholders until we can figure out what's happening with the director and what we're going to do. Um, but it's another thing to have people who are going to make really important decisions in terms of like policies. We all know policies can be inherently racist. And so we need people who have the core mission and the core value of anti-racism to be creating these policies and the procedures for the department that is supposed to be anti-racist. And when we're taking it away from other departments, like there was a reason, a reason for the separation from other departments. And like, yes, we always saw all of these departments working together. They're all under the public safety network in the same way that the fire department works with the police. But do police go and do firefighters jobs? Like, no, that's not how it happens. Of course, they can support each other. That doesn't mean they need to work within the same departments. Um, and so I think there's a big difference between like saying we need their expertise on certain specific tasks or certain specific questions we need answered and to pull them in to ask certain specific questions, but to have them be in charge of literally everything is very, very concerning. Um, and although BIPOC led is definitely part of our recommendation, and I see that the team who is being proposed to do this work is majority BIPOC. It's not just having a majority of people of color in leadership. It's also about the values and the intentions. And I think that's a huge piece of what's missing here and why it's so concerning. Um, moving along to the resident oversight board. Um, I think I expressed my frustrations at the last meeting, but I will do so again, that this is taking so long. I have heard that this has been in negotiation for almost two years. Why are there still legal issues that need to be sorted out? It's been two years since it has been with the legal department, since it has been with um, within nego negotiation with the union. I really, really don't understand what's taking so long um, and what the pushback is. And so I'm hoping that there are ways that we can move this forward and if there are any huge legal issues holding it back? Are there ways to sort of omit things and, and move things forward? Um, and then when we're talking about the RFP, um, I, I'm sorry, cause I was multitasking. So I'm not sure if you said this already, but there were certain parts of the, the RFP that may have been like sort of over ambitious. I think you may have said Pamela. Um, and so are there things we can just take out instead of separating? Because I did hear that you said you wanted the consultants to do outreach to the community and that's great. And I'm not saying that the community should not be involved in the process at all because they absolutely should. But there is an entire report from the CSWG. There is a report from LEAP. There is a report from 7Gen. And all three of these groups have expertise, have done the outreach and have data that is readily available and can be utilized by consultants, they do not need to redo that work again. They simply need to implement the resident oversight. They need to just move to implementation. And so I'm hoping that we can skip the research part again, because we've already spent town funding on consultants to do the research that was complained about for spending too much money. Um, and so we need to just move to implementation. Um, and so then that was my second question is about the funds. You said the, the funds are in place. And does that mean just for the consultants? Or are we also including like stipends or any materials that would be needed for the actual functioning of the resident oversight board? Have those funds been secured? Because I don't believe so, but I'm not 100% clear on that. So that would be helpful information to know. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to uplift and emphasize Ms. Pat's comments in regards to um, Hazel's and what happened with their situation. Um, and something that I have noticed is a huge issue in this town, um, something that I, I would like for you all to think about, and I would be happy to think about this in collaboration with you all, is that the town has, there. there is no mechanism to report instances 
of injustice and to have them actually addressed. So like this situation, this situation happened. We know it happened. We know it was not okay. It was not right what happened. It was blatant racism. And so what do we do? Like, how do we address this and how do we correct instances of injustice? And so I know we have like uh, the, the Human Rights Commission, but they have a limited capacity to make actual changes. And so is there some way that we can create something that can make that happen? Because this does need to be addressed. And I'm not exactly sure how we can make there be substantial changes so that this does not happen again. And so that it's remedied. Like we can't just say, oh, that sucks. And now we're going to try not to happen in the future. But like Hazel's is owed. Like the town owes Hazel's. We need to correct our are wrong and and undo the harm that we have done. And I'm hoping that this group would choose to be a part in facilitating seeing that to fruition. Um, so again, thank you all so much for your work and your time. Um, yeah, and have a good night. Thank you, Alicia. Um, we have Ms. Custard and then Edgar Cancel. Hello. Hello. Um, first, I would just like to um, pay my respects to Demetria Shabazz also. Um, she was definitely a warrior. Um, and she did so much work, not just in Amherst, but in our region. She was amazing, and I do hope that there will be other celebrations of her amazing life. Um, I want to thank Deborah especially because she's asked a lot of the questions that I have. Um, this investigation, five weeks, it's it's a long time. and And honestly, it feels really shady. I don't understand why it's taking so long um, to make a decision either way and to um, give Crest the leadership that it deserves. I also have concerns about this leadership team. I don't, I know that's not the vision of Crest as its leadership. Um, I know all the hard work that people put in to put that recommendation for Crest together and that that leadership team does not represent that. Um, I, I did want to let you know that the um, there was a listening session held at the high school. Uh, in my opinion, it was it included a very small number of students. And considering we have almost 900 students, um, I don't think that was the best way to get youth input. So I would say the input they got, I, I listened to a lot of it. It was great, but I don't think it was representative of all of our students, all of the youth in our school. So I would also, um, suggest that there be virtual opportunities for the youth to also participate. And I agree with Ms. Pat's suggestion that um, like many institutions, the last uh, three or so candidates are um, presented um, to the public and the public has a time to meet and ask questions of them. So I think that's important for all of us to participate in. Um, I also wanted to let you know that Crest has been working with the high school during this five week uh, lack of um, a director. Um, we have been trying to put in place um, an alternative to suspension and or detention. We don't really have detention at the high school either. 
um, but that's not what I'm going to call it. I've uh, um, sort of named it Positive Behavior Intervention Saturdays. So um, they've been working with us to set up two Saturdays a month for students um, that we feel could benefit from um, doing some kind of curriculum on thinking about their behaviors and also doing some community service to, um, to show that they are thinking about their behavior and or decisions they made and, and um, how to change those. So that work is being done and um, we've been talking with Kat about that. So um, what is the person's name that's gonna be working with the youth again? I didn't write that down. Do you have his name, their name? That's coming out of the DEI office? Um, yeah. So the person's name is Asa Stanley Kimler. Okay, so um, I'm happy that someone's going to be working with the youth, um, but I think that more people that work in town hall should be doing more outreach with the youth. It shouldn't be just be one person um, that's most likely temporary um, working with our youth. I think that everyone that works um, in town hall and for public safety should be building relationships with our youth. So um, I'm glad that there's a person who will be dedicated to that, but I also support um, stepping out of town hall and, and really doing some relationship building with the youth in our community. Um, let me see what else. I think that's all I wanted to say for tonight, but I again want to thank Deborah for bringing up a lot of the issues that not just me, but others in the community have concerns about. And so I do want um, the powers that be in our town to know that we're watching. We may not all be speaking up, but we are watching. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Custard. If you know any high schoolers who want to be a part of this committee, please if, encourage them to apply because we would love to have the youth voice here as well. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to do that because I say I don't. But, Thank you. Um, <laughs> Everell, I mean, excuse me, Edgar. Hey, y'all. Um, my name is Edgar Cancel. I'm a Northampton resident, um, but also a longtime uh, member of a... Um, a sub-community in Amherst uh, called the Old and Young Basketball uh, Tournament. Uh, we've been doing for uh, many decades, um, and I have often been one of the organizers. I'm involved in, in many other capacities in, this, in the town of Amherst, um, but um, I have been attending these meetings and will continue to um, support you all in the good work that you're doing. Um, uh, and I will also echo and elevate those concerns that people brought up in regards to the delay with CRAS um, and the resident oversight board. Um, and I'm just uh, here to support, um, to observe and, um, and to be um, of help if uh, ever needed. But I do wanna commend you all for your work. Um, and, um, and that's about it for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. I do not see any other hands up. Uh, so I think we can move along to the next meeting agenda. And I know that we set 
our meeting for October, the last meeting that we had. Typically, I think we've been trying to keep it to the second Wednesday of the month at um, 6.30. Clearly, today was a bit longer because we were doing introductions at the beginning, um, but I would say actually two, three hours for us is a pretty, pretty good meeting length. Um, and I believe that I didn't write it down in my calendar, but the second, I think it was October 11th, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so October 11th, 6.30, we had said we would move the um, police and schools discussion and include um, ASA. Did I get that right? I know you just said it. ASA is the, yeah, okay. Um, obviously, our regular CRESS DEI updates. Um, and with particular focus again on um, the leadership and deployment of 911. Uh, yeah, inviting that leadership team, if that's still okay. the case in a month from now. I imagine regular updates might also include progress on the police chief search. Yeah. Um, and then also um, co-chair. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. And perhaps we could set aside a little bit of time at the beginning to invite any comment around the documents from CSWG and um, the late report, if anyone has any, we say just like review of documents, including CSWG and then our charge. Um, all right, that sounds like a, a lot of things to meet about, <laughs> um, but if anything comes up, what I usually do as chair is send an email out around the week before our meeting with a reminder of time, date, what we've talked about and request, see if anything else has come up as an item. And I think, does anyone else have anything they would add to the list at this time? Going once, going twice. All right. I think, oh, sorry. Did you put police in our schools? I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, yes, I will reach out the first week of October with any requests for further items. And I, um, let me just make sure there's nothing else on the agenda, but I think it, it could be time to adjourn unless anybody else wants to stay in chat for longer. <laughs> um, so again, welcome to our new members. Typically our meetings run till around nine, I would say. Um, and I appreciate everybody's input. I think we can adjourn. And see you all next week at the- I just, I just need a time please, Allegra. Oh, it is 9.35. Thank you. Bye. And a second. Party block party. <laughs> no, Allegra, and a second. Oh, and a second. A second. Need to second the adjourning. Can somebody second the adjourning? Or else we'll stay here. Second. Second. Okay. Oh, Deb. <laughs> Deborah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Guys. Okay, so